let's remember that an isomorphism is a function from a group to another group such that it's one to one onto and then has this additional property that phi of xy is equal to phi of x phi of y. This is called preserving the group operation because it sort of means that it doesn't matter whether we do the group operation in G before we do the function or we do the operation in G prime after we do the group op the function. That's an isomorphism. Now it turns out that if we get rid of the requirements that it be one to one and onto and only stick with this preserving the operation, we get what we call a homomorphism. It's all the same thing. We got a function from G to G prime and it has to preserve the operation and that's it. This allows us to do some kind of interesting things. So for example, I can say I've got phi going from the integers to z8 defined by phi of x is equal to x mod 8. Now certainly that function goes from z to z8, no problem, but does it have this homomorphism property? Well, if I do phi of x plus y, because the addition in z is a is addition. So I'm going to have x plus y mod 8. But because of the way modular arithmetic works, that is the same thing as x mod 8 plus y mod 8. Assuming that that addition is done mod 8, which is the operation of z8. So that is going to be phi of x plus phi of y, where the plus is done in z8. That's okay, but now let's take a look at a little bit more interesting example. If I look at GL2R, which we remember that's the set of two by two matrices which are real valued and non-zero determinant, I can go ahead and I can take phi from that into the set of non-zero real numbers defined by phi of a matrix A is equal to the determinant of A. To show that has the homomorphism property, phi of AB would be the determinant of A times B. But we know that determinants, the determinant of a product, is the product of the determinants. So again, phi of A, phi of B, and we have that homomorphism property. Let's look at one more example, and that is, let's say we've got phi mapping r star into r star, so non-zero reals into non-zero reals, by phi of x equals x squared. This one's interesting compared to the previous examples because the other ones actually both ended up being onto functions. This one is not because we're never going to get any negative outputs from this function. But still, if I do phi of xy, that's going to be xy squared, and we know that's the same thing as x squared y squared, which is phi of x phi of y. So all three of these things are in fact homomorphisms. 
Going back up to the top, there's an important subgroup that's associated to a homomorphism. It's called the kernel of the homomorphism. And what that is, it's the set of all elements in the original group, G, such that when I do the homomorphism to that thing, I get the identity. This turns out to be a subgroup, and in fact a normal subgroup of G, which is very, very important. Let's see how that works on all these things. So for this homomorphism from Z to Z8, we're trying to figure out what are all the things such that when I take X mod 8, I get 0. Well, with what we know about modular arithmetic, that's basically just all the multiples of 8. So the kernel of phi here is the set of all 8x, such that x is an element of z, or sometimes that just gets written as 8z. If I look here, so I want to find all the, th the matrices, 2 by 2, real valued matrices, such that when I take the determinant, I get the identity in R star, which is 1. So we want all the matrices with the determinant of A equals 1. But that's actually a group we've already studied. That's what we've called SL2R, is the kernel of that homomorphism. Finally, let's look here. This one here is, we want to find what are all the sets x such that x squared equals 1. And so as we're working in the real numbers, there's only two ones. x could be 1 or negative 1. So the kernel of this is equal to 1 and negative 1. It's not a group we think of very much, but it has an identity. It's closed under the operation, and it wouldn't be hard to show that it's associative. So there we go. The idea of these homomorphisms, it lets us do a lot of things, which we'll see in the next videos.